Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at um, this computer system. Um, some of you guys will probably not recognise it, but it is a computer system we have seen before. What this is, is my old Hanswell build. And I've uh, put it in this configuration so that um, I can use it. I can continue to use it and it's my secondary Linux machine. So uh, let me talk you through this actually, just uh, give you all a recap as well. So um, the board that's in this computer is uh, something that you can't actually see because it's buried under this um, Arctic, um, under this Arctic uh, cooler um, and um, my um, RX 480, more on that in a wee bit. Um, but this board is the um, ASRock uh, H97M anniversary board, which um, which ML3 very kindly uh, donated to me last year. Um, it has the i5-4670 non-K, um, which uh, I put uh, in it and um, this Arctic Freezer 7 cooler, which I had originally bought for my server. Um, I, I got an updated uh, server, which is uh, down there. I've changed the fans in that. So now they're blue. Nice. Um, that that was a Socket 2011 uh, board. It's a Xeon, and I forget what it is, a X5470 or something. I can't even mind. Uh, it's got, uh, suffice it to say, it's 6 core, 12 threads, I think 2.93 gigahertz. Um, yeah, I, was, I bought this cooler for that, but um, ML3 or Sansui 350A, one of them or both of them, kindly donated me a Dynatron cooler. Um, I did get a cooler for the Haswell board as well, but um, I recently rediscovered this Arctic cooler sat in one of my drawers, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to throw it in. So... Aye, the rest is history. You know, just kind of plop that cooler in and away we go. Um, power supply, I have nicked it from the Dell XPS. And yes, I do feel suitably bad. I love that system. I really do. Um, I coveted it when my former flatmate had it. Um, and now it's, um, it's, at, um, it's sat at my office um, in a non-bootable state because... Um, I may have pilfered the power supply and the drives that I installed in it. Um, yeah. So what what drives did I install in that system, which I then pilfered? Well, I've got a couple of drives, actually. Um, so I have um, the Crucial 240, 200, I think it's a 240 gig uh, Crucial SSD. And um, that's, um, that is actually running a Windows 10 partition. And uh, you'll see why in a minute, you know, why we've got a Linux, uh, Windows, Linux, Linux, Windows, Windows, Linux. Um, and there is also a Hitachi Ultrastar 2 terabyte data drive. <coughs> so if I just... Uh, whip this around you can see that there is a second SSD mounted here um, this is Alexar this has been pilfered from my Hewlett Packard Elite book um, because I wanted a uh, I did want a Linux SSD I, I wanted um, <clears throat> I did want uh, Linux to be on an SSD because Believe it or not, even though Linux can run on a hard disk, the SSD does make a big difference. I noticed that when I had uh, Manjaro running on the Crucial drive um, in, the, uh, in the Dell Optiplex. Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, that's, um, that's some of the drives. And uh, now, you know, through a complete accident, we're round at the back of the computer. Um, we see that the ASRock board, ASRock, um, 
I'll tell you about Asrock, they do tend to hold on to legacy things for longer. Um, I believe um, there was someone who had um, a Sandy Bridge board. I, I want to say Z68 board that had... Um, that actually had ID and floppy connectors. And, and that was, um, that was, as far as I know, um, an ASRock motherboard. So, uh, yeah. So where this one's got kind of legacy is it has dedicated PS2 keyboard and mouse ports, which is, uh, I, I like that actually, because I do use a PS2 mouse and keyboard with this machine, because I use my Trendnet, uh, PS2 KVM and uh, I'd like to wonder where this, where this screw came from. Oh, isn't, isn't life wonderful something? Uh, ah, I know exactly where that screw came from. Good. Um, right, there is a fan bracket here, but I haven't put a fan in because um, the, uh, the cooler does, should push the air out. Um, Although I might put something in, I might put an extra fan. I was uh, playing a game on this last night, not with this card, but we'll we'll come back to that. Um, and it, it did get quite toasty bottom. Um, so what other parts do we have on the back of this computer? We have a DVI out, um, VGA out, HDMI. Now this is for if you just use the onboard graphics on your Haswell CPU, um, you can plug into any one of these parts and you will get a display. Nice. Um, you have USB, uh, four USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. Um, this has got the um, receiver to my Logitech F710 wireless controller. Uh, Ethernet, gigabit, uh, line, uh, microphone in, line out, or speaker out and line in. And then you've got the RX 480, very nice. It's got um, it's got all the parts here. Um, you've got um, one HDMI, a three display port, and a DVI. Now that's going to be useful because this is a VGA monitor and it's connected to a VGA to DVI uh, adapter. I hope that works. Now you have the um, expansion slot. Um, retention bracket thing. I'm not going to use that just yet. I want to check my work because I have just installed the RX 480. Now, you might be wondering, why have I relieved my main rig of its GPU? Well, um, on this rig, I was using this card, an R7 360. I've got to say, it's a good card. It's a fantastic card, really. I was playing Forza Horizon on this, um, admittedly at 1280 by 1024. That ran buttery smooth. I, I was amazed. Um, it really did. Um, so it's, it's a really good card, but the unfortunate thing is, this system, while it does run Windows, it's mainly meant to run Linux. Unfortunately, this GPU does not seem to have Vulkan support. I tried playing Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I tried doing it in Steam. I tried doing it in Lutris. Um, I just wasn't getting ever, anything, whereas other people were, you know, uh, ProtonDB has listed Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy as being platinum status. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, my experience should correlate with the experience of other people on there who've literally just downloaded the game to Steam, started it, and away they go. I have DXVK installed. I have all the stuff that I need, you know. I even tried experimental GPU drivers um, and rendered my Manjaro installation unbootable, but luckily with a, um, a CD, uh, with a live USB stick rather, and um, the ch root command, I was able to get back into uh, my installation, remove the experimental AMD GPU driver, and um, away we go. So, anyway, uh, last night I was playing Portal. Uh, that runs absolutely beautifully with the GPU, uh, even though uh, 360. But then again, I mean, Portal's a very old game now. Um, that will run on pretty much anything. <laughs> Probably um, it'll run, pretty certain it runs on integrated graphics nowadays. Um, 
And that was built on the same engine as Half-Life 2. And I remember when Half-Life 2 was a benchmarking game and, you know, how crazy people were when it came out in 2004. It's like, oh, look, you can see fish swimming in the water and what have you. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, so round to the front of the case. You might be wondering what uh, case this is. Well, this is um, a deep, cool case, which I got on Amazon. It was cheap and it feels it. Um, Elmo 3 reckons it'll uh, fall apart in a few years. Um, I'm not inclined to disagree with him. Um, it's very light, although it's a lot heavier now that I've put in the uh, RX 480. Um, but what I've what I've essentially done is made a system that's small enough um, that it could conceivably be a LAN party uh, case. And that is brilliant. That is very of the time. 2020, we're all in bloody lockdown. There's me building something that could quite easily be a bloody LAN party rig. So, anyway, got this kit, listen to it. <laughs> very hollow. Even, even with the side panels on, it's a very hollow sounding. So what have we got on the front then? Um, well, we've got USB parts on the top, like a Lee and Lee case. Essentially, it's a Lee and Lee case. I don't know why everyone's uh, pitching and moaning about deep cool cases. It's got USB parts on the top. That makes it a Lee and Lee case. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. 18-year-old self sometimes comes out to play and be a complete eject. Anyway. <laughs> it's like when I got my Nokia N73. It's like, it's got Carl Zeiss optics. Just like the Hubble Space Telescope. I'm using space technology in my new smartphone. I'm special. I'm like fucking refried shit. Anyway. Um, one USB 3 part, two USB 2 parts, um, headphone, microphone, reset button, power button, you have, um, um, hard drive LED, uh, hard drive indicator LED and power LED, optical drive, one of the optical drives, um, the uh, DVD burner came out of my desktop because I had, uh, let a few SATA parts on that board. Um, than I did on this one. So um, that optical drive came out and went in here. Uh, I've got card reader. Um, I have one actually in my main machine as well. I bought two of them. Um, USB 2 card reader. Saves USB ports. And, you know, I, I do use a compact flash memory card. Okay, enough, uh, enough jibber jabber. Um, well, not until I show you the case badges. Got Manjaro, Intel Core i5, Haswell ear sticker, um, AMD Radeon graphics, and a uh, Scotland flag case badge. Being able to get a few of these on eBay, just right for being case badges. So, ready to go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's a moment of truth. So, the RX 480 is now installed in this box. Um, processing Vulcan shaders. That is something I have not seen before on here. So, uh, yeah, I think we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I've got to say, as much as I hate the idea of cloud gaming, not ever owning your games, um, and how much I think the Google Stadia model really does suck, Got to hand it to them that they are offering uh, AAA titles and they all run on Google servers, which are Linux. I don't quite believe this. <laughs> There's Crash Bandicoot running on Linux. Oh, that's Crash Bandicoot crashing on Linux. Let's try that again, shall we? Wow. Vision presents a smashing blast from the past. Developed by vicarious visions. And the Xbox controller works beautifully. Well, I say Xbox, what I mean is uh, this Logitech controller in X input mode. Although I will say. I am hearing, I don't know if it's the speakers, I am hearing noise on the, um, I am hearing noise through the, 
on on the speakers. Right, can I? Yeah. It is full screen, 1280 by 1024. Yeah, 12 8 by 10, 24, 60 frames a second, V-Sync on. Right, yeah. And at some point, I would like to get, you know, the widescreen monitor that I've got working. I did buy a hands-free monitor, but to be honest, I would have preferred a widescreen one of these. So let's let's see now if I can play if I can play some games. This this is amazing. As I'm playing this on Linux, guys. And now, thanks to Steam uh, Cloud, I have, um, it will actually save what I'm doing. Um, and import it to any machine. Whoops. <coughs> Damn, he could have died there. Well, not died, but at least lost some of his uh, life. They've got to time this right. Oh. That was perfect. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have Crash Bandicoot working on this thing. Now, I'm quite excited now. It means I could get... How many of these games could I get working? Because, I mean, this is essentially just my old computer. And, you know, I could play a lot on that. So, pff, upgrades. Well, I'm not planning any upgrades because I'm really out of money just now. Just, you know, all this has cost quite a lot. But in the future, I think more storage, maybe a bigger SSD. Uh, pff, bigger SSDs or, you know, maybe a bigger games drive, data drive. And, um... I think that'll be it. But there you go. This is my um, Haswell build. And, uh, well, just actually, before I do go, one thing I did want to show you. How cool is that? Green fan. Because the case doesn't have windows or anything, it's very subtle. So that's a Haswell build. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to join me for my next one. Judy, bye.